which side of your scoliosis is weaker. Scoliosis causes an unnatural spinal curve to develop, and the condition induces a lot of uneven forces to the spine, the surrounding nerves, and muscles themselves. And this unnatural spinal curvature can not only affect the surrounding muscles, but it causes a muscular imbalance to begin to develop. Now, when we look at a scoliosis, a lot of patients are interested in which side of the curvature is actually stronger and which side is weaker, meaning is the concavity weaker or stronger or is the convexity weaker and stronger. And when we look at scoliosis, it was once thought that if you had a curvature like this, that the concavity muscles were too strong and they were pulling this curvature into a position. And then this on the outside of the curvature was weaker. And that's as a result, they would give you exercises to kind of strengthen the outside and weaken or lengthen the inside side. And when we look at scoliosis, some of these things are, are what um, we're talking about have some validity, but we know what we once thought that the curve is being caused as a result of muscle imbalance is not what we initially thought. In fact, the only case that we can say that their scoliosis is actually occurring as a result of muscle imbalance are patients that actually have neuromuscular problems. They have a true neuromuscular diagnosis like cerebral palsy, uh, like Marfan syndrome, like neurofibromatosis. There's truly a neurological muscle dysfunction that's leading to the scoliosis. However, in most typical idiopathic scoliosis cases, this is not the, uh, the thing that's occurring. The scoliosis is not being caused by a muscle imbalance. The muscles are reacting to the imbalance of the spine. So it's a more of a reactionary thing, and it's happening in response to scoliosis, not a causative factor of scoliosis. Unfortunately, as curves get bigger and the muscles continue to adapt, and the person goes through modulation and through adaptation, and the muscle imbalance now can start perpetuating curve progression because it's been developing and be, been this way so long. And in fact, in, the la in a recent study that they just released within the last couple of years, they actually did muscle morphology testing. They actually looked with MRIs to see, okay, in the concavity and in the con in convexity, what's actually stronger and weaker? And what they concluded, that the muscles in the concavity of the scoliosis are the ones that are actually weak, even though they're ones that are shorter. And the muscles on the convex side are the ones that are stronger, even though they're being stretched. So stretched and shortened are not always meaning weak and strong. And I think that's the confusion that ends up happening with patients with scoliosis, is they associate weakness and compression as being the same thing. So in this scoliosis, normally we're trying to lengthen the concavity and also at the exact same time trying to strengthen it. And then in the convex side, we're normally trying to shorten the muscle and also trying to make it more balanced with the in the convex side or con con concave side. So therefore, this muscular imbalance is a creation of the scoliosis, not a, cause not a causative factor. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, is as the curve worsens and as the curve tends to get bigger because we know it's a progressive condition, so can the imbalance of muscles over time can also worsen with it. Progression means that the size of the unnatural curvature is increasing. And as the condition increases, so this is uneven forces and it can affect other things. And one of those things is definitely muscle imbalance. Scoliosis ranges from in severity from very mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And the more severe Severe, the more uh, overt the effects are, and the more you're going to see the effects on muscles and tissues and movement and balance and range of motion. And the best way to minimize these effects of scoliosis is really to treat it and to treat it as proactively as possible and to reduce the size of the curvature. Because if we do nothing with muscle strength, but we make the spine straighter, now the muscles have greater leverage on the spine, which makes, which makes them work better. And so therefore, the symmetry of the spine is the most dictating factor on how you're using your muscles, not whether they're strong or weak. And also we know as a progressive condition, we know there's no cure to scoliosis. So we can never expect a scoliosis patient to have perfect symmetry because we're never going to get a spine and make it completely straight. But we definitely know it's highly treatable. And we definitely know that with early detection and early intervention, there's much fewer limits because less things have already responded to the curvature and it hasn't developed as many more serious or complicated effects. Scoliosis treatment involves really determining the best way to manage the scoliosis over someone's entire life because there is no cure. Now, when we look at scoliosis, it can be treated two different ways or two main pathways. Something that I call 
conservative approach and, and non-conservative approaches or surgical approaches. And these two approaches really differentiate how you're gonna be looking and managing your scoliosis. When we look at surgical approaches or non-conservative approaches, surgical approaches is something that involves spinal fusion. And spinal fusion is where they use rods and screws and they fuse the spine together. And this is a very invasive surgery because you're fusing multiple vertebra, sometimes 10, 12, 13 different vertebra into the spine. It's not only costly and invasive, but it's contrary to the spine's natural design, meaning the spine was designed to be movement-based, to provide flexibility to the spine so we can move and bend and adapt to our environment. When we take fusion, we eliminate this movement, which is the natural basis of the spine's design. So it's by definition a non-functional approach. You don't have a more functional spine as a result of scoliosis surgery. You actually have a less functional spine. However, it's a risk that's willing to be taken trying to preserve spinal alignment. So it's sacrificing all function for alignment. Non-surgical treatments or more conservative treatments try to integrate all of these conservative approaches to really deal a functional improvement to the spine. So yes, we want to reduce the size of the curvature, but we want to do it in a way that we're pre preserving spinal function. And the idea with non-surgical approaches is really to kind of combine multiple disciplines so we can affect the scoliosis on every level. Chiropractic care in terms of alignment and repositioning with adjustments of the spine, physical therapy to help improve strength and well-being. We also look at scoliosis exercises to help increase strength and balance of the body. We look at corrective bracing to reshape the torso into a greater alignment and rehabilitation to really start addressing the spine and the structure. And when we, we can improve the structure of the scoliosis, we're really addressing the condition of the scoliosis or what's causing the condition to really become worse, and that is the size. And we look at muscle imbalance, how do we really address it? So muscle imbalance, first of all, we want to address it by trying to make the spine straighter because the straighter the spine is, the more balanced your muscles are going to be because the more, symmetry, the more symmetry that occurs in your spine. But we also give very specific asymmetrical exercises trying to deal with what, what I mentioned earlier is that what we know is occurring in the concavity and the convexity of the scoliosis. And by improving the muscle tone and muscle tonicity of these of what's happening in the scoliosis, we can really help support the spine in this reduction stage. One key focus of treatment is to really improve strength, balance, and coordination by reducing the curve, but really working through the things that I mentioned, chiropractic care, therapy, exercises, rehabilitation, by supporting the muscles, increasing core strength, stabilizing back tissue and muscles, and really relaxing muscles that are too tight, lengthening muscles that are too tight, really shortening muscles that have been overstretched, and really kind of making as much symmetry as possible but understanding that there's never perfect symmetry in a patient with scoliosis, because as long as there's a curve, the muscles will react in an asymmetrical way because they're supporting an asymmetrical spine. As a progressive condition, we know the best time to start treating your scoliosis is always now. The best way to minimize the effects that scoliosis has on muscle imbalance is through proactive treatment that prioritizes prevention as opposed to reaction, meaning as we can reduce a curve before it becomes severe, you have less effects that occur through the body and ultimately the less need for invasive future surgical treatment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.